Welcome to this in the series on financial intelligence. And today we have with us Crystal Dowell and Rene Delmas from Fortress Fund Managers. Let's, Let's talk, talk a little bit about uh, planning for retirement. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, a, a concept that people, as you just written, said, just don't take uh, interest or take it serious at all. But I think it will start by asking, you know, why, why should we start thinking about planning for retirement? I, I always answer that by saying because you want to be able to afford to continue to afford the things that are important and necessary to you and keep affording those things. So it's not about keeping up with the Joneses, it's about being able to always afford what you will appear to you and are necessary. So the necessary things will be like paying your bills, educating your children, etc. And then the important things are exactly what you find those to be. So with that as a definition um, of which we call that financial security, then how do you plan for your return? And as you alluded to earlier, it's so different depending on your age, how much you earn, whether you're married, whether you have a mortgage. It, it, it really is an individualistic discussion that you need to have. But generally speaking, I would say your first step is to ensure that you spend less than you earn. Then you need to save an em for an emergency fund, three to six months of your salary so that any unforeseen emergency expense comes up. You have it right there in a bank account, easily accessible. And then after that is when you start investing your money. So saving for the emergency fund, then investing your money. So there's a whole host of things that you have to individually plan very closely and as soon as possible. Not like you said, when you're past retirement age, when it's just just too, too late. Well, you know, in my case, it struck me that, wait a minute, wait a minute, you are exposed. And, and so I had the good sense to, to find a solution that was uh, available to me, but not everybody has that. Uh, kind of solution available. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. You know, I would say the minority of employers, private sector employers in Barbados, do not have private pension plans, which means a lot of our population, when they retire, are going to rely on national insurance. And that's going to be inadequate. And we could spend a long time talking about national insurance, and I'm happy to, to have another discussion on that. But we saw the issues uh, when the, the, the government had the discussions last year because national insurance is not financially sustainable. So changes are coming to national insurance, and I don't think there are going to be changes that we want. I don't know what they are, but we'll wait and see. Hence the importance of exactly what you just said. If you are fortunate to work for an employer that has a pension plan, and you, are not, you have not joined that pension plan, that's a big mistake. It, it, you need to start saving for your retirement. Um, the longer you delay, the harder it gets. Retirement in general is not a topic that um, people think about even at my age right now um, and it's a bit short-sighted. So me personally, I don't want to be working forever. <laughs> I would like to be enjoying my life and I would also like to maintain the standard yeah, just, that just, you are accustomed to. Yeah, not only that, but also like enjoy the small joys of life. Obviously not live exuberantly. So it's, it's about a balancing act. And obviously like the future is not necessarily guaranteed, but that attitude is not the primary thing that you should be focusing on. Defined contributions and defined benefits. Now, uh, as I understood the defined benefits, I was lucky because I came into a company that had defined benefits which has since morphed into defined contributions. Explain that for me in layman's terms, if one of you. Defined benefits were, were plans that, that were formed, you know, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. The where, good old days. Good old days. Where when you joined an organization, you spent the rest of your life. The average person spent the rest of your life with. So as the name suggests, benefit, defined benefit. The pension was defined based on a specific benefit formula. And a general thing could have been like 
2% of your retirement salary for your years of service. So if you retired and you had 30 years, 30 by 2 is 60%, 60% of your salary as a pension. That was great for the employee because he knew clearly what he would get at the end, but it had to be funded. And you were trying to fund it based on an unknown future salary. And that fell out of favor with employers because that unknown liability became too expensive. So in the last 20 years, the shift, as you rightly said, moved to defined contribution. And a defined contribution plan is where the benefit is not defined, but the contribution level is defined. So the employer would pay, for example, 5%, the employee pays 5%, and that money is invested. Nobody knows what pension that will give you at retirement. You've got to wait to when you retire. To find to, but from the employer's point of view, that was great because the employer just knew I had to put in my 5% and that was it. Defined benefit, the app you could say you will now have to put in 20%. Um, so that's where the shift has come. So the, the, the risk has now fallen squarely now on the individual to ensure that the pension, as Crystal mentioned, is adequate and, and is sufficient to maintain your standard of living. <laughs> well, there you have it. Now we know how we can plan for retirement, those who are young enough, uh, and remember what they said, the age to start doing it is now, whatever age that is, start today and plan for your retirement.